What's up guys, in this video we're gonna show you how to install a Nyax credit card reader on an old school machine. In this case, it's our Barbercut arcade machine. We're gonna show you how to connect it into all the existing coin door wiring, but we'll show you some other things too. So guys, if you like this style of video, leave it a like. Enjoy the show. What's up guys, Matt here with Galaxy Games 843, back with another video. Today's video is a how-to video. We're gonna show you how we install a Nyax credit card reader into our Barbercut arcade machine that's located at the video game store. Now I wanna remind you guys, if you guys wanna get some Nyax credit card readers for your machines, there's two different kinds available. Both are VPOS touches, but there's the Pulse model or the Pulse cable and the MDB cable. So if you're doing this for a vending machine, you'll want to use the MDB cable. But if you're doing it for a coin operated game like Barbercut or a pinball machine or a classic arcade game like one of these back here, you'll need the pulse cable. So we're gonna show you some easy ways to hook it up without modifying any of the existing wiring in your machine. So let's get right into the video. We're gonna to have to do some research first, then we'll do some wiring setup, and then we'll put it all together and connect it in and make it work. All right guys, let's go. All right, guys, here we are at the video game store. First, we're looking at the lower coin door. I see there's already a cutout for what would be a dollar bill acceptor. We can put a, a credit card reader right here. So that's what I'm planning to do. I'm planning to put it right there and then fish the wires up past the coin bucket holder there into this upper section. And what we're looking for here is ways to connect in. So I'm going to look at the coin door lights to power the Nyx credit card reader. Those either run 12 or 24 volts. And the good news is the Nyax credit card reader runs off of 12 to 24 volts. So we'll be able to tap into the, what this would be like an extra, you know, a lot of machines had two coin mechs. So since this one only has one coin mech, it's got the wiring for the other. And then there's the coin switch wiring too. So we can run the pulse cable to that blue wire, which would be like a coin trigger is how that works. So this will work for any pinball machine, any arcade game, anything that has a coin door that uses coin switches. So we'll talk more about some other ways we can do it if, say for example, it's got dual coin mechs and all those plugs are already plugged in. So we'll talk more about that. But I think that's how we're gonna do it. Let's get into it. All right, now we're at Radio Shack and I am I know I'm lucky, I still have a Radio Shack. So we're checking the drawers. I'm looking for connectors to plug in to those um, those quick disconnects that are already inside the coin door. So I'm looking, I'm looking for some male connectors, um, 0.250 for the pulse and then smaller ones for the powers. And then these are some female 0.250 quick disconnects that we can use to explain some other things. So let's take a look at those. All right, let's take these back to the shop and get to work. All right, guys, so we've got a couple Nyax credit card readers right here, as you can see. And one of them actually came out of this combo vending machine. You might remember that from the diesel garage. We actually pulled it and swapped in another machine. We plugged the place where the Nyax credit card reader used to be, and now we're gonna get it ready to go into our barber cut. Now, I've already reset the Nyax credit card reader in the back office, so it's set up as an amusement reader now and a pulse reader rather than an MDB vending machine reader. But you can see we still got our MDB cable connected here. So what I did was I actually went on the Nyax website, shop.nyax.com, and I ordered a brand new pulse cable. Now remember, if you're placing an order with the shop.nyax.com website, make sure you use checkout code GALAXYGAMES843 to save yourself some cash. All right, so like I said, we're converting this from, an, from a vending machine Nyax credit card reader to, to one that's going to work with our barber cut, but you can do this for pinball or classic arcade. There's just a couple things you'll need to check depending on what machine you're putting it into. Here's another Nyx reader we have over here. This one's gonna be for another machine that we've got on the way. This one's brand new here. Uh, we just uh, received this one in the mail. So watch for more videos to come on more Nyx readers and more machines coming your way. All right, so here we go. So like I said, I've got this one on like a, a piece that kind of extends it out. And I think that's gonna work well with the, um, the barber cut machine. So first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect this uh, plug for the uh, MDB cable here. There we go. All right. That's disconnected. 
and I actually broke a piece of it off in there. That's no good. All right, let me clear that out real quick. All right, there we go. See, here's a little piece. I broke it off of this tab. The, the actual little tab you're supposed to press down, and I didn't do a good enough job of pressing it down. So luckily, I've got multiple MDV cables, but uh, this will probably still work, because uh, looking inside, the only contacts you use are over here, and the broken side's over here. So I think this will still work, should I need it for another machine. But like I said, I've got other MDV cables. So we'll get this out of the way, because we no longer need this one for now. Now what we're going to use now is this pulse cable. So let's open it up. And basically, you'll notice that um, the ends here are different than the MDB. They've got just regular loose wires, and none of them are stripped. So the ones we're going to need are the AC in negative, AC in positive, and then let's see, we need pulse one. That's not that one. I think it's this. Is it this green one? No, that's pulse six. We need pulse number one. I think it's this green one over here. Pulse one, there we go. So all the rest of these, we can just kind of bend out of the way. And what I'm gonna to do to make things easier, I'm actually gonna take a little bit of electrical tape here and I'm gonna give you a good shot. I'm gonna take a little bit of electrical tape here and just kind of wrap it around to keep them out of my way. So let's do that. Again, we, we might, you know, wanna use those in the future for something. Like, for example, if you want to hook up your prize sensor, you'll use Pulse 2. But for now, I'm just worried about these three cables. Now, the hardest part of this whole thing is these cables are so thin, we got to strip them. And my wire strippers, they don't go very small. So you can see, like, here's the problem. My very lowest setting, the wire strippers go right through it. So I'm going to try and do it at a little bit of an angle. I'm try and strip them like that. There we go. All right. Angle worked. Let's try it on uh, this one here. That seemed to work good there. And we'll try it on this one here too. Okay, all three wires stripped. Now, these are really thin wires. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, how, how thin these wires are, but because they're so thin, I'm actually going to tin them with solder just to make them kind of solid and make them kind of one wire. So good news is, let me move that out of the way. I've got my soldering iron right here. And I've got my solder. So all I'm gonna do is just, like I said, tin them up. Let me, let me make sure I'm getting a good angle here for everyone. Okay, let's try and tin these wires up so they're not going all over the place when we go to crimp them. Now we're gonna talk about how exactly this is all gonna work. So let's tin these together here. All right, that wire is nice and tin. Get some fresh solder on there. Right, that wire is good and tinned also. Last, we need our pulse cable here. All right, we got a good tin on those. And yeah, I dripped some solder here on my table. Not the end of the world, but once it cools down, it'll pop right off. Let's make it a liar out of it. There we go, see, it just pops right off. We'll get all that later. All right, so we've got our wires tinned. So now it's, we don't have to worry about them all getting all frayed. So now let's talk about how this is gonna work. So for my method, we're gonna, you know, we, we looked at the uh, at the machine, we did our research, and we saw that there's places where we can tap in. Now, because it's only got one coin mech, it's got wiring for a second coin mech that we're gonna use. But we're gonna use these ends uh, for this. So, so basically, um, depending on how your machine is set up, if you've got two coin necks and you don't have open um, plugs to plug into, here's what you'd want to do. So basically, um, say for the for the coin um, the coin for example the coin um, switch, it's got a plug that goes to it like this already. This is a quick disconnect female side that plugs into your coin switch. So what I would do is I would get a, one of these and a male, and I would make a pig a pigtail off of it. So that basically what would happen is this would then plug into your coin switch and then the pigtail that comes off would plug into your existing wiring and that way you don't have to modify any of your existing wiring. And maybe we'll do a video like that in the future, but for now we're only going to do it because we're only doing one machine. So all I'm going to be using, I'm not going to be using these quick disconnects, I'm going to use um, these 
these, um, uh, what do you call it, male ones here. And uh, I got one more size. Let me go grab that. Okay, so here's the larger size that we're going to use for, this is going to be for the pulse cable. Here's the little bit smaller ones we're going to use for the coin, um, I'm sorry, not for the coin, for the lights or for the power. So you can see the size difference. One is 0 0.250 and I think one's half that size. Um, so there we go, 0.125 or something like that. So, all right, so as you know, we've got power negative, power positive, and pulse. So the power negative and power positive, we're gonna tap into the 12 volt lighting of the machine. So luckily, like I said, it's got an open port. And then the pulse, we're gonna tap into the coin switch. So I'm just gonna fold this over like so. And I'm just gonna crimp it right on here. Just like so. Go ahead and crimp that right on there. Get my color coding right. So red is this one. There we go. All right, red's crimped on. We have a connector on the red one. Now for the power and negative, let's see which one of these. I think I'm going to use the red ones because the red ones are actually for smaller gauge wire compared to the blue. I bought both at Radio Shack because I wasn't sure which one I need, but the red definitely is the way to go. Smaller, smaller wire cable or smaller uh, thickness. And those, those uh, male ends are the same size too. All right, let's go ahead and pop these on here too. And folding that over, just give it a little bit more to grab to. Go ahead and crimp that on there. go and we'll do the same for the negative okay crimped on there now the good news about doing it this way is I don't have to modify any of the wiring of my existing cabinet so we're ready to go all right so um, let's see what else do we need to know um, obviously, we're going to do a couple things. We're gonna, when we get there, we're going to take our digital multimeter. We're going to test to make sure the lights are running at 12 volts because some machines don't run lights at 12 volts. So we're going to make sure that's the first thing because the NIAX reader needs 12 to 24 volts to work. But like I said, too, if, um, if you were running um, a machine with dual coin mech and you didn't have existing ports to tap into, like I said, I would just make something that connects to, you know, make up, make, like I said, a pigtail. So something that connects to the coin switch and then has another piece that comes off here that, um, you know, I, I crimp this wire on here, but make another wire, like get, get some, some spare wire to make it come off that as well. So it could kind of look like, kind of look like this, have one wire going in, one wire coming out, and then I put this onto that wire and then connect that to the existing coin wire that's already in your machine. So pull off the coin switch, plug it into this piece and then plug you know, this piece into that piece is how that works. I know it's kind of hard to explain, but like I said, maybe we'll make a video about that sometime. But all right, there's our ends. Turn that off. Um, we're going to go to the location now. We're going to install the NIAX credit card reader. We're going to uh, hook up all the wiring, zip strip it or zip tie it all up nice so it's not all hanging all over the place. Let's go off to the location, to the barber cut and get this thing installed. All right, guys, here we are at the Barber Cut machine. This is in the video game store. Doing this a little bit higher speed. All I'm doing now is taking the bolts off of that um, that blank section there because this is where we're going to mount the NIAX credit card reader. Now, I'm using a standard socket set to remove the bolts and the actual um, plate is just going to fall out, basically. Once it becomes loose, it's, uh, yeah, there it goes. It doesn't, uh, doesn't just sit in there. All right. Now we can actually put the NIAX credit card reader in place. And I do want to remind you guys, if you want some NIAX credit card readers for your machines, we've got a deal for you. We can actually save you cash. All you need to do is go to shop.niax.com, add some VPOS Touch credit card readers to your cart. Again, choose MDB if you want them for vending machines. Choose Pulse if you want them for a machine like this, a coin-operated arcade game or pinball machine, or in this case, it's an amusement game, a prize game. Um, and then, of course, when it's time to check out, use checkout code GALAXYGAMES843 to take instant money off your bill. There we go. All right, so I'm just connecting those bolts back up. I'm going to make sure everything's all in there nice and secure. Um, I had to just do some shifting around a little bit. It didn't want to line up right, but there we go. Now we'll tighten it all up. 
Then we're going to fish the wires through that little that little cutout section there in the side of the, uh, the that metal piece that holds the coin bucket. So we're just going to, like I said, fish uh, the pulse wire up through. Then we'll put the antenna wire down through to connect it back to that Niax credit card reader. And once we've got that done, we can close and lock that bottom coin door. So we'll, we won't need to do any more work in the actual Niax reader. Now, again, I've already reset it. It's already set to a pulse amusement style machine with the bonus plays, um, just like we have in our key catcher machine right next door to this machine. So that's cool. All right, now let's go ahead and fish down that, um, that antenna wire. There we go, got it fished down. Once I plug it back into the Niax reader, I'm gonna use some zip ties to secure those wires in place, make sure everything's good to go because I don't want them to get caught on anything or hang up on anything or anything like that. I also do not want them to impede us removing that coin bucket to get the quarters out when it's time to do our collections. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll do one more zip tie. There we go. Yeah, let's do one more zip tie. Again, just so nothing gets hung up. Then we'll close and lock up that bottom coin door and start working on the routing and you know wire management and everything up at the top section there. All right, let's lock up that bottom coin door. We'll move up to the upper coin door and this is where we're gonna make our connections. Now remember, we're using quick disconnect mail side. We're gonna plug them into our pulse, which is from the coin switch and the power uh, positive and power negative to the existing lights. Okay, I've uh, got my antenna wire ran and all that's good. So I'm gonna just go ahead and zip tie that together. I'm gonna wedge it behind some of those other wires again. So it's not in our way. So it's not getting uh, caught up on anything. Now let's go ahead and make our connections. All right, I also want to remind everyone to make sure your machine is powered off when you're making those connections. So I did power the machine off, made the connections, powered back on, you know, plugged everything back in, locked everything up. So now we're going to run our test. So as you can see, the Niax credit card reader booted right up. We're going to run some tests to make sure this is working, to make sure we hooked everything up properly. So we chose a dollar, we swiped our card. We should get one credit, there we go, on the machine. So let's go ahead and give it a quick test play. We'll do one more test after this just to make sure it's working. So again, all we used were those simple three wires, AC positive, AC negative, and pulse. That's it. So nice and easy, three wires, just connected them right in with quick disconnects to the existing wiring. We didn't have to modify anything. Everything was good to go. Perfect. First test worked. We're going to give it one more test just to make sure it's working, and then we can start wrapping things up. So again, if you want some Niax credit card readers, go to shop.niax.com. Use checkout code GALAXYGAMES843, save yourself some cash. All right, there we go. Test number two was also successful. I'm gonna say that this install went smoothly. So we're, we're excited with that. All right, well, let's wrap this video up, guys. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something today. Again, we installed that Niax credit card reader in our barber cut arcade machine now if you want to get some niax credit card readers for your machines we do have a discount available all you need to do is go to shop.niax.com use checkout code galaxy games 843 when you're checking out it's going to take instant money off your bill so not only did we teach you something but we're actually going to be able to save you some money too by going to shop.niax.com, use checkout code GALAXYGAMES843. Now remember, if you're uh, adding credit card readers to a machine like one of these or our barber cut, you want to choose the pulse option, but if it's for a, a vending machine, you'll want to choose the MDB option. All right, so again, hopefully you guys learned something today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's not a regular vending collection video, a little bit different, but we had fun doing it. Anyway, guys, want to remind you, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the channel. If you learned something today, give it a like. If you like our content, think about subscribing. It really does help out the channel. But with that said, we're wrapping this video up right here. So once again, guys, this is Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We'll see you next time.